So Ben Shapiro on his show spoke about the January 6th hearings, and there seems to be like a large realization that's setting in for um, right wing pundits where they either have to discredit the testimony of the people on the January 6th commission. Uh, they've been going after that aid. Uh, what, what's her name? Uh, Hutchinson. Hutchinson from yesterday calling her an opportunist, basically saying that uh, it's just petty gossip, the ketchup uh, on the walls, boiling her testimony down to just that. But Ben Shapiro is taking a different route here. Here he is basically saying that Donald Trump could not have intent on January 6th because he's not capable of it mentally. Mm. And that's mm. why I supported him for four he, years. He's dusting <laughs> this off from the old impeachment hearings. Yeah. Finally, just, we're getting to the truth. He's uh, making an argument for the 25th Amendment, I guess. Unclear. Let's hear. Now, the biggest problem that any prosecution, this is what Merrick Garland is facing down. The biggest problem for any prosecution of Trump is that virtually all the crimes they're talking about are crimes that require intent as an element of the crime. They're not negligence crimes. It's not Trump sat there and he didn't really know what was going to happen. He was careless and reckless about it. And therefore it happened. Right? Because that, again, recklessness is a lower standard. And criminal negligence is a lower standard. If you want to prove intent, and that's what this committee said they were doing, right? They said from the outset, there was a seven step plan, like a concerted plan of intent to, to get us from November 4th to January 6th. And that that plan was put in place step by step methodically. They have not proved that there was a plan, right? It, it seems more like Donald Trump thrashing against a glass box is, is more what it seems like, frankly. But that was always true. Now, a few years ago, I said that I wasn't sure we were talking about Trump and Ukraine and the impeachment effort. And I said, there too, this is a crime of intent. I'm not sure that Donald Trump has the intent to eat a ham sandwich. Like I just, he's not a person who has a plan. And a lot of folks on the left were like, well, you're excusing him for everything. It's like, since when is a person not having the capacity to make long-term plans some sort of defense of the person qua person? It's a defense against a criminal. It's, it's, Qua it's, it's, person. <laughs> sorry, it's a legal defense. Like, this is basically the insanity defense. Yes. Of course it's a defense. It, just because, you, like, it's still a defense, even though you, it's kind of an insult as well. Yeah. It's also like what the Joker says to Two-Face in The Dark Knight, which is so surprising that he, he's just not a guy with a play. It's, it's very, it's a very weird argument to make, but this is, you know. It this is, is exactly I, what the, <laughs> right, this is not a man with a plan, yeah. But, this is actually, but the, the idea that you, like, Trump was clearly trying to work out a plan, though. The I idea know. that, yeah, of I mean, course. the idea and the, and that he's he did not, not even, land on one, and that's, yes. I mean, that's like, did, did Ben, did Ben, what did, what, what did Ben Shapiro feel about that guy uh, who drove to uh, 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 the area around Brett Kavanaugh's house uh, and then called the cops to say he's feeling uh, horrible, thinking horrible thoughts. Does Ben Shapiro think that that guy, because he didn't have a plan of action, he wasn't there to, to do anything or had any, like, that's the yeah. argument they made. That's the same argument they made for that guy. That guy showed up there with a gun planning to kill Kavanaugh. The Trump guy... I mean, the idea is ridiculous. The idea yeah. that Trump just couldn't, didn't have a set out plan, even though he clearly was taking multiple routes to try to come up with one and put one together. Um, that's my, I mean, it's, it's great that he's making this defense because it looks yeah. horrible for Trump and for Ben Shapiro, but uh, come on. And we're not endorsing the guy that drove to Brett Kavanaugh's house for president. Um, just want to make that yet. Um, but I mean, like, I, but but the, that's the thing. It's just like, how how are you able to say with a straight face, logic and facts guy that he's incapable of thinking long term or having a plan that isn't like instinctual, like a baby just responding to stimuli and at the same time say that he was a president that was capable of taking this country to great heights. Uh, it's just I mean, hilarious. Yeah, of course he had a plan. His plan was to have people say that there's election fraud and that when they when they didn't go along with that plan, he threw his burger against the wall. <laughs> <laughs> That's that that was the plan plan being frustrated um and you know what the other thing is is before we play the rest of this clip whether you can have an intent or not that is a legal question that comes up and typically the the little test that you decide if uh, someone is capable of intent or not is are they an adult yeah and actually uh the funny thing is, i want the funny thing the grim thing is is in uh in uh, america here that sometimes uh, uh 
I'll just read some of this from uh, Incapable of Criminal Intent, the case for setting a minimum age of criminal responsibility in Illinois. Currently in Illinois, uh, children of any age can be arrested, charged, and adjudicated delinquent. Any age. So, like, that's one horrible thing we don't do in this country is have, like, say uh, we, uh, we say that even, like, a 12-year-old can be capable of criminal intent, but not the president of the effing United States who's a billionaire. Yeah, the logic and facts guy here, again, can't hold these two thoughts in the same... In the same well, uh, uh, logical thread here which is that trump either has to should have been removed by the 25th amendment because he doesn't have the ability to think long term as the president of the united states and doesn't have the capacity to have intent uh and ben shapiro didn't say that at the time so i don't know why he's now retroactively using it or that's not the reality and trump was thinking it through it's just not a well thought out plan so let's just keep going though I'm of intent. I'm not sure that Donald Trump has intent to eat a ham sandwich. Like I just, he's not a person who has a plan. And a lot of folks on the left were like, well, you're excusing him for everything. It's like, since when is a person not having the capacity to make long-term plans some sort of defense of the person qua person? Since when is somebody not able to get bloody gloves on his hands? Uh, we also... Also, Trump was a fucking real estate developer. How long does it take to get a building up? It clearly shows the guy does have the capacity for long-term oh, yeah. planning. I mean, give me a break. That's Sorry, a when, when, I, when, I, uh, when I didn't pay this contractors, that wasn't me planning on not paying them. It just happened. It's just it's going, my fault. going from the gut. I'm the gut guy, both physically also, and in right. how I do my, make my decisions. And also, even when it comes to the ham sandwich example, I mean, we know that Trump very much plans to regularly eat McDonald's for like lunch every yeah. uh, every week. I mean, come on, he he, you, you think <laughs> he, he plans his meals for sure to make sure they include zero vegetables and only red meat. He yeah. might throw that he might throw that ham sandwich at the wall. Yeah, with yeah. intent. Ham. <laughs> Mountains of fast food don't randomly appear in the White House. That's the first time it's happened was when a president intended for that to happen. <laughs> Also, I feel like he's conflating two things here. Like he keeps going back and forth between like long term planning and intent. And those are not the same thing. Yes. Like you can you can intend to rob a bank and not have a good plan for how it succeeds and That's still true. be brought up on like robbing, you know, bank robbery. Like you can go in there and like have a banana in your coat and point it at the, you know, point it at the uh, teller and tell her it's a gun. And that is a bad plan with no long term means for success. But you still intended to rob the bank. Yes, like, that's literally the definition or the sorry, the distinction between first and like second and third degree murders is the, the that distinction. Yeah, he's not arguing that like Trump might not have had the intent to rob or like to steal the election. He is arguing that like Trump is too stupid to actually put in place the pieces to get it done, which is a whole different thing. Second, you know, Ben Shapiro and the far right online debate bro archetype are just so shameless because this is like the argument style they fall back on when it's just clear that they've been back into a corner, which is just these technicalities that may make us look worse than simply being whatever we're accused of being. But if I can technically say it's true or it's plausible, then you, like, as a court of law, can't dispel that. And I just think back to when he was talking about his wife in, like, the WAP video. And he was just <laughs> like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, was, I didn't mean, like, vaginas don't get wet. I just mean that in some instances, if they get too wet, that is, in fact, a type of, you know, illness, as per my doctor wife. And so you can't make fun of me online for not thinking that vaginas don't get wet. And it's just like, what? And it's like, it's so, it's okay. Well, they're so. nuanced, bros. Like, they are one step away from the Washington Post fact, fact checker, right? Where they take any, like, little, nu sorry, nuance uh, from, from a statement made to disprove it in order to be like, nana, nana, poo, poo. That's the extent. Oh, yeah. It's just, it's always funny when they get, like, down to, like, the really nitty gritty of it like this. Because they're yeah. always willing to cop to, like, being simply unable to understand language or like how language functions in context and instead want to just like talk about it in this like vague abstract way or you know saying that trump has the inability to like think more than two steps ahead like yeah. pros or something we actually have a little bit more of the shapiro clip if we wanted oh wow yeah, yeah, wow yeah he was really he really going on this rant to call trump stupid is it wasn't he <laughs> put, us in well, logic, put us in a logic octagon so we got to tap out and let trump off the hook well, you're excusing him for everything. It's like, since when is a person not having the capacity to make long-term plans 
some sort of defense of the person qua person. It's a defense against a criminal liability charge. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's a defense of the person qua person. Okay, but, the point but yeah, we have a problem with you defending him from the criminal liability charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's what we care about. We don't care about your personal relationship with it. Uh, yeah. The point is that this is always going to be a difficulty with Trump because Trump is so... He's so say instinctive in the way that he responds to things. Say stupid. That it's very difficult ever to say that he had intent to do this particular thing that required a concerted plan. That's just not the way he operates. And I think everybody who watches him knows this, which is why when I mean, it goes to a deeper kind of critique of Trump, the left would always say, well, look at what Trump's treating. It's so terrible, man. It's so terrible, isn't it? It, it just shows. It. And, and you guys, you just want us to brush it off. You're not taking it seriously. And I'd be like, of course I'm not taking a tweet seriously. Why do I take a tweet seriously? He says a lot of stuff that's not serious. What about tweets? They always, that's all, they always focus on that as if that's, and I see this with everybody on the right, who, and this is obviously where it comes from. It comes from the top. The Ben Shapiro is formulating that whole, oh, the left only doesn't like Trump because he does mean tweets. I'll see that all the time. Like uh, a story on Facebook will have comments on like the story will be like about uh, inflation or whatever. And uh, the comments will be like, but Trump's mean tweets, right, liberals? As if it wasn't what he was doing with the office when he was in there with his executive orders and what the Republicans were able to get away with because he was there to sign whatever laws and bills they passed. As if all those things weren't who he put on the Supreme Court, as if all those real things aren't why people didn't like Trump. It was the mean tweets. And they're it's trying so that funny. defense here with um, with January 6th that, oh, you know, Trump was just, he wasn't down there. He was just tweeting and, and posting videos on Twitter. Uh, we also now know, and I mean, it was known before, but I guess you guys needed the, uh, the, 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 you know, by you guys, I mean the right, needed those videos from people on the right also saying this, that Trump was having plenty of meetings with people who could have had the capacity to try to overturn it, uh, overturn the 2020 election uh, using whatever, you know, bastardization of the various laws they would try to use. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and like to watch his... Uh, He's purposefully conflating leftist agitation and critique in like the media and among Democrats with the uh, prosecution of him potentially for criminal intent, as we mentioned here. So person qua person, Ben, uh, that is not actually a defense for the criminal liability that we're discussing here. He's hiding the ball on purpose and watching him struggle not to say stupid there actually put some serotonin uh back into my brain for for the first time since this row news has, has been handed down no no definitely honestly both of which said are just so spot on because like they are both just like classic far-right tactics to kind of launder in far-right talking points and far-right policy into the mainstream without people paying attention. And, you know, Ben Shapiro wants to flatten both formal and informal sanctions. Like you, like Trump being kicked off Twitter with Trump going to jail as though those are the yes. same thing. And so kicking Trump off Twitter is something that we should never really do without some overwhelming courtroom evidence or some sort of shit like that. And then also, just to, I said it last week too, like this classic tactic amongst the far-right Right, and all the way up to Republicans to pretend like they're just not doing anything. The far right is always pretending they're on the back foot, they're not doing anything, or if they are doing something, it's not a concerted plan across multiple vectors that you can see at, at the state level, at the national level, at the judicial level. You know, it's not as though we could draw, draw a direct connection between like the don't say gay bill and the, uh, the attack on transgender rights and the sort of rollback of women's rights and the rollback on voters' rights. They don't want you to be able to draw those connections because then it paints the picture of what they are you know, a rather and a more accurate picture of what they are, which is a far right anti statist party that has taken our entire country hostage. And the Democrats are usually willing to play along with that kind of uh, with that obfuscation because it's in their best interest to pretend as though they're winning at some stage uh, when they get some sort of concession about, you know, Disney Channel will no longer post uh, or rather puts Disney Channel will put like a disclaimer about, in front of Pocahontas before it airs. <laughs> and so like that's enough to inflame the far right base and convince them that they're losing some sort of real material war in America. And it's also enough for the Democrats to pretend like they're making some real real like progress on things and both sides are more or less happy to like obfuscate that the far right is gaining more and more control in this country yeah and i just want to say like the it's amazing that this guy is credited for being a philosopher by the New York Times. This is a fatuous argument. There's no, I, I can't. I mean, if you're if you're 
a legally trained person and can give any sort of historical background to this being plausible. Like, it's either um, if you're and if you're an adult, you can have intent, yeah. <laughs> and uh, otherwise, it's an insanity defense. And if it's insanity defense, then he shouldn't be running any companies. <laughs> like, like that that would that would show up. That would be one way to prove that this guy is incapable of intent is if actually he's been removed from his other companies because he's insane. But that's not that's not even remotely like on the table because he's just a uh, like a guy who wanted a coup and he fomented that using his Twitter account and other things. I want to take a call. Oh, sorry. I was gonna say Ben Shapiro like is a philosopher in the same sense that every like asshole in your like uh, philosophy one hundred and one is a philosopher, but he's able to like gussy it up better with like you know pre law language essentially. Yeah, you when know, he like used the person qua, qua so. per, the person qua person, so. but like when ultimately like his argument is, man, can anyone know anything? Can you can we ever prove another person is has intent? You know, like I guess not if you like define it that way, we can never know what's inside Donald Trump's head and heart.